Hello and welcome back to News Minutes, the 15th of September and right now it's time for a quick Blizzard news update. We're having a look at what's new with Diablo 3, World of Warcraft and Starcraft 2. Starting with Diablo, Blizzard have posted a quick sneak peek of what's to come with patch 1.0.5. The blog post covering defensive skill changes is already up. And in it, we get a look at the progress of Blizzard's eternal quest to promote build diversity. In patch 1.0.5, they'll be making changes to defensive skills across the board, while simultaneously reducing incoming damage. The net result is a survivability buff for players and an increase in build options as defensive abilities become less mandatory. Check the full blog post out for more. After that, we get in a look at a new event called the Infernal Machine. The Infernal Machine is a device that will allow level 60 players to battle uber versions of some of Sanctuary's most nefarious bosses. While the rewards for defeating these bosses will be great, some assembly is required. Sounds like a lot of fun to me. The last tease years of a new system, Monster Power. The Monster Power system is designed to give players more control over how challenging enemies are in each difficulty. The rest of those blog posts should be up soon. If that wasn't enough, you can also check the first part of the Voices of Diablo out, read the latest signs of PvP, or read last week's dev journal discussing crowd control changes. Now though, on to World of Warcraft. World of Warcraft patch 5.0.5 has been released and it contained mostly just a bunch of tooltip updates and a couple of bug fixes too. After that, we got the first set of 5.0.5 hotfixes that addressed a few annoying issues players were having with cross realm zones, tweaked a few of the classes and fixed a few dungeon and raid bugs. All in all, nothing too major. Then Blizzard's 12 day journey into Mists of Pandaria has begun. It is pretty much just a countdown of sorts. Be sure to keep checking back on the official site and Facebook page every day between now and the expansion's release for exclusive content including new cover photos updated daily with artwork from us, the community. Then if you want even more entertainment, be sure to check the most recent zone and faction previews out. Also on the official site, these are for the Jade Forest, Valley of the Four Winds and the Tillers faction. Good reads, lots of pictures, worth it. Lastly, in the World of Warcraft news, the World of Warcraft developers did a rather lengthy Reddit AMA on the 12th of September. The full transcript can be found linked below. Ah, Starcraft 2. The heart of the Swarm beta servers went down earlier for the application of a new patch. A rather interesting and controversial patch, I must mention. The best kind of patch. Let me just cut straight to the chase here. Carriers are back and Warhounds have been removed. I know, pretty shocking. I just hope players actually appreciate and use the carrier now. As for the Warhound, good riddance. Other changes include that the attack range on Swarm Host's Locusts has been reduced from 3 to 2. A whole bunch of changes have been made to the Protoss Tempest, Mothership Core and Oracle, including that the Oracle's preordain ability has been removed and replaced with a new area of effect ability called Phase Shield. The Terran Reaper now has a passive ability called Combat Awareness that allows the unit to see up cliffs. Battle Hellions can now be built from the factory and have an armory requirement. There's a new upgrade at the armory that'll allow the transformation between battle mode and normal mode. And lastly, the armory requirement for Widow Mines has been removed. Interesting stuff to be sure, check the full patch notes out below. Next up, the StarCraft 2 World Championship Series Europe Finals are happening this very weekend. So if you want a bit of extra entertainment, you'd best tune in. It's gonna be crazy. This event will represent the culmination of the national qualifiers and national championship events that happened throughout Europe and is being hosted in Sweden's impressive looking Ericsson Globe. The tournament will be an all-out brawl between some of the best players in the world, such as Mana, Nurcio, White Ra, Stefano, Thorzane, Rhett, Darkforce, Sokke and many others to decide who will go on to represent Europe at the Battle.net World Championship in Asia later this year. Casting by Tastosis, Apollo and Kaloris should also make watching the streams all the more entertaining. Full details can be found below and I do urge any of you keen for some esports action to tune in over the weekend. If that somehow wasn't enough, here are a couple of smalls from all of the aforementioned games. Check out the Battle.net SMS Protect if you haven't already, have a peek at the latest comic contest winners entry, read about the Mists of Pandaria launch party you won't want to miss. There's some new Warcraft fan art to have a look at, the fourth part of Lily's travel journal is up. 
Former World of Warcraft players are being offered some free game time. Three different Mists of Pandaria TV spots have been spotted in the wild. The final issue of The Sword of Justice is now available. Starcraft 2's fourth ladder season of 2012 has begun. Check Total Biscuit's virtual jersey scoreboard concept out. Read about the MLG vs Pro League Invitational and MLG Fall season and much more. All of it can be found in the description below this video. That's it for this episode, check back here soon for more, like the video and do all that other good stuff, and most importantly, happy Infernal Pandaria Countdown Carriers. Or something. Happy that.